Hello and welcome everyone to this Scientix webinar. I'm very happy that you all joined us today. Um, we are going to start now. Um, and well, we are very happy to welcome you to the Creative Media, the Easy Way to Teach STEM webinar. And we have uh, quite a few speakers with us today, which we are very happy to welcome uh, Armin Hotman, um, Joel Josephson, Dr. Oliver Thiel, and Dr. Edda Elizabeth and Magnus Dottir. Welcome to, to our speakers and to all the attendees. Uh, our speakers today, they will talk about, uh, they, they have been involved in, in a few EU uh, funded education projects um, in the Life Learn, uh, Lifelong Learning and Erasmus Plus program. Um, they were coordinators and partners of these projects, so they will share about their experience. Uh, in the last three years, they have uh, specialized in projects involving the use of media in STEM subjects, mathematics and biology. Uh, they, are, they are now involved in the video math and video biology project, which they will uh, talk more about during the presentation. Okay, um, so the, the idea of this webinar is to introduce how creative media can be used as an effective tool of teaching STEM subjects, and specifically by looking at these two um, projects and how they achieve this, video math and video biology. Um, they will share with uh, our speakers. Will share with us uh, how students, uh, how student autonomous, autonomously created media uh, enhances learning and retention, as well as motivating learning. So um, this was just a short introduction to the webinar today, and my colleague Noel is available. Uh, if you have any technical problems, please write to her privately in, in the chat. Um, okay, so we will now start the presentation and uh, we, it will take about 45 minutes and then in the end we will have 15 minutes for questions. So please post your questions in the chat and we will collect them and at the end we will address uh, all these questions to the speakers. Okay, so enjoy the webinar and I will give the floor now to, uh, to the speakers. Okay, so first of all, can everybody hear me, please? This is Joel speaking. Can anybody hear us? Yeah, lots of people are speaking. Yeah, uh, yeah I think I was. I can hear you. So you can all hear. <laughs> oh, thank you, Edda. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, has everybody got their cups of tea ready or whatever you're drinking? Thank you very much, Edda. <laughs> You're being very cooperative. So thank you so much, everybody, for coming. And thank you very much to ADRI and EUN and uh, Scientix to make this possible for us. Uh, it's lovely to share our work on such a wide forum across Europe. And I can see there's people here from all over Europe, uh, even from the Indian part of Europe, which is a bit of a surprise. But why not? Uh, it'd be great. Now, I also noticed that uh, Ivana here, and Ivana Kovalik, I apologize if I say your names incorrectly, who actually was one of our teachers who used Vidumas autonomously uh, in Poland. So she's really great, and thank you very much for being here as well. Um, so let's see what we're going to do. Well, first of all, we're going to talk about the two projects, as Adria has already said. These were both projects which were funded under the Erasmus program. They're the KA2 large-scale projects where we are creating innovative methodologies and resources for use for the schools of Europe, all, all over Europe. Uh, today's presenters, I'm going to let talk very briefly about themselves. So Armin, who's been our coordinator for both these projects, please tell us something about yourself. No, no sound, Armin. We haven't got sound there. OK, here? Yep. Very nice to be here. Hello, everybody. It's wonderful to see such a nice audience, so many people from different countries. I have not seen anybody from Germany yet. Hello, Germany calling. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm a media educator. I coordinate both or coordinated with you must now be on video biology. I'm into media, and I'm especially into the use of video video used by the students, and I will talk about that in a minute. Nice to be here. Okay. 
Uh, I'm next in the list, so I better say who I am. I'm Joel Josephson. I'm from the Kinder site in the UK, and I've been involved in over 30 projects. And don't ask me what I actually do in them, as little as possible. But I have specialized in dissemination and also in innovation and bringing up new ideas and bringing teams together in the projects. Uh, Oliver. Hi, I'm Oliver Thiel. I am a mathematics teacher and I teach now mathematics education for uh, teacher students, students who want to become kindergarten teachers. Lovely. And sorry, your last editor. Etta, sorry, Etta, I must translate properly. No problem. Um, nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I am a biology teacher at the University of Iceland. I'm a biologist myself, uh, but I also do teach uh, biology to teacher students. Lovely. Okay, thank you very much. As you can see on the page here, uh, at the bottom of the page we're showing, the links to the website, we will be repeating those at the end of the project with other links to other content that we have there as well. Uh, let's just move on. Um, I'm just going to let Armin talk about creative media because he's very much the person who comes from the media background and it's bringing together the idea of how we can use media in education and I don't think anybody in Europe has more experience than Armin uh, within these different disciplines and how we can Thank you, Joel. Um, not sure about what you just said. Um, media is massive, 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 I think. Lots of different ways about using media. I want to talk a little bit very briefly about the use of video. Video has been my main thing. I come from professional video production very, very long time ago. Um, done lots and lots of video projects with schools. and. There's different sides to it. I put a few things on this first slide. There's, there's more general side to it. It's just still not the most common form of, of most common method to use in education using video, and especially children using video. More and more teachers use video as resources. They watch little YouTube clips, but um, I have not seen, still not seen so many teachers using video as a tool for production, a tool for learning. So I'm just looking down here at the chat. If you have done video projects, I would really appreciate if you send a little line down here in the chat so I get a little impression of where you are and what you do. Video is quite quite cool for many students. It's, it's quite fresh and many students who struggle with learning in certain subjects, they might be more motivated to do that project if they use video because it's just not a standard classroom approach. Um, I see some, yes, I see some first things. Thank you in the chat. Um, video is really useful if you want to present and record what you are doing in the classroom. It can be a very short clip. You can take it outside of your thing. Can we maybe go to the second slide? Do I have to switch on myself? Yeah, thank you. Because um, it's quite important for you now to understand why am I doing this. I'm not doing this just that I want that children use video. I want that we use the video, the production, as a, as a tool for media education, that we learn about the media. So I want that by doing a video, by creating your own messages, by discussing, and we try to work in teams with students, working together, reflecting what you do, and discussing why I choose to do this and not the other one, that students become more aware of the media. I think it's quite clear that students spend tons and tons of time in front of their smartphones and screens looking at things, but I think there's not enough time to talk about it, to reflect. And I think there should be some space in school in doing that. And instead of just having a big class discussion, I think it's quite nice to do a video project and talk about it. In both video biology and video mass projects, that's very much the background. I've written the applications where we come from, but we try to focus then on the two specific subjects and see what can we do in those subjects. And how can video actually even more can learn 
help the learning of some of the themes in the subjects. And both our presenters, um, Oliver and Edda, will give you some more ideas about it. For me, it's just very important to enter process, to get into it. And it can be very, very simple. That's one more thing I want to say now. You don't have to create a very big video production. You can just take a few photos, put them together, or just a very short video clip and then get started if you're confident to develop it further. With both projects, we always start with very simple ideas. And if you go on the websites, you see always examples and task sheets. And we often have them in different languages already, where you have very simple ideas. It should not be a burden. It should not be another big thing. It should be something playful and nice to include. And you don't have to do everything in the class either. You can do it outside of class. It can be part of a homework. You can use it for assessment. Lots and lots of different things. And just before I finish, one thing which is really important, you need to get permission from the kids before you start, or rather from the parents, because the kids are normally younger. And you need to check the whole area of copyright. You cannot just use commercial content. So this was a very, very <laughs> condensed little idea of what we do in using video production in education to motivate to learn about media education. And I would like to hand no, no. over now oh, to Oliver, Sorry. who will I'm, go I'm into that in a lot more depth. First. I'm what going to would that look the like in and a the video, maths and then lesson? Oliver. Oliver. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> that's OK. That's OK. Sorry. Just uh, you, 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 you'll have to stay behind afterwards and write 100 times. <laughs> OK. Sorry. <laughs> OK. Thank you, but Jim. Just before I hand over to Oliver, I just wanted to very briefly, uh, first of all, show an actual one of the videos that was made in the Video Math project, which very much reinforces what Armin is talking about, and that the, we're not looking for vast, incredible uh, productions in the video. The video is a motivating tool for the learning. So I want to show one of the videos that was made by some students. Um, I think they were 10, 11 years old. And they were asked to show equivalence. And this is the video that they came up with. And I hope it's going to show for everybody. OK. OK, so we can see from that that we're talking something pretty simple um, and very easy to do. That was actually a stop motion uh, video. So one other thing I just want to say before I hand over to Oliver is in all these uh, projects, we work with three modules of different levels of difficulty. So we go from very easy to more complicated to quite a bigger ideas. But all the videos that we have done and all the videos that are being done are being made by the children, by the students, collaboratively and autonomously. And the teachers are very much just setting the parameters where they go. And with that, I am going to hand over to Oliver, please. Oliver, just one other thing. Do you, will you be able to move on the slides for yourself? That's very better. OK, great. OK, so over to Oliver, please. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Yes, so I'm a mathematics teacher. And mathematics is a, a very abstract subject. And that is often the problem, that uh, when uh, we teach mathematics in school, then we focus very often on the symbolic representation that the children learn the number symbols and the uh, symbols for the operations. And then they have to learn the rules, how to manipulate those uh, abstract symbols, this special language that is developed um, to work with mathematics. But you cannot say that you really have understood mathematics if you are not able to relate those abstract concepts to the real world. And that is shown in the 
diagram here in the picture that this abstract uh, 12 minus 4 uh, is related to situations in the real world. And we have to make this uh, translation. And it is best with the, when the children can uh, handle concrete material, move uh, things around to, uh, to work on this uh, operations by really operating with, uh, with stuff. And a more abstract representation, but not that abstract as the symbols, is to display uh, what is going on on a picture. And that is abstract because a picture is static. You cannot see what is happening. And here the video comes in because uh, I think a video is a very powerful tool between the concrete material that we use and manipulate and the static picture because it is a moving picture. It is a picture that shows a, a, or a, a sequence of pictures that shows what is going on. And we have seen this how the children are representing uh, this abstract concept of an uh, equation that uh, they can represent with, this, with scales that is the same amount on both sides of the scales. And in order to do this, we have developed uh, six steps. And that starts, of course, with uh, the teacher who has to prepare uh, for the work in the classroom. And the most important is to decide the topic, uh, because that um, Video is not, uh, uh, you cannot use it for every topic. Then you uh, introduce the topic to the students and, and as well how to make the videos. And then the creative part begins. And that is that the students are working on the problems. They have to solve the mathematical problem, and they have to think about how to visualize uh, this in, in a video. And that they will write down on a at, with a storyboard, so making pictures, uh, static pictures of what will happen in the video. And that has to be acknowledged by the teacher, because it shows how the children are thinking, how they solve the mathematical problem. And when the teacher acknowledges that, yes, that is the right solution, and that will work in the video, then the students can continue with making the video. And here you can see uh, students from Bulgaria working on this, making uh, the pictures for uh, the video by uh, cutting out shapes from paper because that was a video about symmetry. So in the filming process, there is still mathematical learning happening, because the, the students will uh, experience that not all this theoretical idea that they had when they thought yeah, uh, through the problem and, and made the storyboard, that sometimes it works not in the video as they thought, or uh, sometimes they do not do in the video when they're working on the filming exactly the same that they have thought before when making the storyboard. So uh, this is a dynamic process. The, the children work with um, concrete material, with um, uh, manipulatives, um, and, and make very important experiences. The next step is a post-production, and that is very important for the children's uh, motivation, because that is the fun part, to make the uh, video look nicer and uh, to add music. Um, and that is the uh, part that is important for, them, for Armin, for the media pedagogy. And, uh, for the mathematical learning process, the large last step is very important, that the students appreciate each other's videos, because everyone has 
put a lot of effort in making this video and then uh, reflecting on the videos. So we watch the videos and by watching how the other students have solved the mathematical problem, you learn as well and you have to explain your thoughts and think through uh, the process what you have done. And when we had uh, the um, um, try out in Norway, we gave a questionnaire to the students. Um, so they ask uh, some questions about how they perceived the, their autonomy, their choice, how many choices they could do, how, what was the tension and pressure, their interest, uh, if they perceived that they learned anything, uh, the effort they had in other projects and um, how competent they felt. And um, there was very little tension and pressure, interest and perceived learning effort and competence was very high and the choice was on a medium level. But interesting is that there are some relations between those variables. So, uh, perceived effort and competence is uh, correlated and um, we do not know in, in which direction. If, the, if you feel more competent, then you uh, invest more effort in, in solving the problem or the other way around. But uh, I think one thing that is very important for us is the uh, perceived choice is related to the interest and to the perceived learning. And uh, in mathematics, often there is little choice uh, because the task is given and you have to solve the mathematical problem. But when working on videos, there's a lot of choice because you can choose how to visualize the problem. And uh, that was the effect that we could measure. And interest as well, the interest was more the interest in making videos, but it has an impact, an effect on uh, how the children uh, perceived how, what they learned about fractions in this case. So that is a, a correlation that is a, a, even a regression that goes in this direction. The more the children are interested in what they are doing, and even if it's doing videos and not uh, solving math problems, the more they uh, have the feeling that they have learned something about mathematics. Just unmuting and now we can go on to the next project. Uh, Oliver, thank you very much. That was extremely interesting and all beautifully put as usual. I just want to, before we go on to the next project, I just want to show one more video from uh, VidUMath, which was one we actually made for teachers showing some of the ideas that we brought into the project. So hopefully I will get that working. Here we go.
that was a video we made for stu uh, for teachers to give them some ideas that we can just go out into a normal urban environment and how many different ideas you can find there just where numbers and shapes are incorporated in, in that environment and how we can use that within our maths education just by sending the children out there perhaps with a particular idea some sort of numbers or some sort of shapes that they've got to find and then you can build up these wonderful videos like this one I must admit we did actually do ourselves one thing I haven't done and I must do I've forgotten is actually given the names of the partners in each of the projects it's very important that you know these the people who did the work for these projects were acknowledged so in video math we had culturing in Berlin that's Armin uh, the University of Coimbra in Portugal, Fachhochschule, uh, I can never say that properly, Biedefeld in Germany, uh, Queen Mary's School in Trondheim, which Oliver represents, and the 32nd School, which is in Sofia, Bulgaria, which is a school in Sofia. In video biology, the partners are culturing again, uh, the University of Kassel in the middle of Germany, the University of Iceland, who Edda represents, and the National Management School of Bulgaria who are uh, bringing different schools from all over Bulgaria to get involved in, in the project. I'm now going to go on to video biology and this is actually an ongoing project. We're halfway through the project. We Last week we actually had a project meeting in my town in Chester and we had the opportunity to do a wonderful uh, workshop for teachers in Chester Zoo which is one of the best zoos in Britain and the ideas that have come out of these are quite fantastic and we're still uh, thinking how we can use some of those ideas within the next part of the project. Um, again, we've already gone quite a long way and we'd like to show a video which has been made by students in Bulgaria that actually is quite amazing because they were told to do a video about the wildlife that they could find just outside the school and this video is what they came up with again it's quite short but please uh, don't get scared okay and you'll understand when you watch the video As I say, I hope uh, you weren't too scared and you'll all recover in time for dinner time tonight. Um, you may say in that video that they wouldn't really dis look at the actual subject, the butterfly, very closely. They were more interested in the creative side of what they did. But if we can find any tool to get the children interested in their learning, then I believe that the creative part is as important as what they learn through the actual video. Um, now we're going to go on to uh, video biology with Edda. If you can come back online, please, Edda. And what we want to actually do here is we're going to do this part as a nice informal question and answer session. So, Edda? Edda? Hi. Yeah. Do you yeah, hear me? Yeah, great. Okay. Yes, we do. Can we, do you want to put your camera on, please? Oh, okay, yeah. There we go. Okay. There All you right. go. Right. So, hi, Etta, and thank you very much. I believe you're not feeling well today. I'm feeling much better. It's okay. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. So, we're not going to get any viruses from you today? Okay. Uh, hopefully not. I guess okay. it don't, don't spread over 
the viral network, but okay, <laughs> good answer. All right, so let's start with our first question. How do you think video biology helps children learn biology better? What's your take on that? That's a big question. But of course, video biology provides excellent tools um, to study biology in a fun way. And that actually, which should suit most children. And uh, the good thing about the project that has been developed for video biology is that they do promote, they can promote deep learning. Of course, children can also go more into the artistic side of it, but they can also um, accidentally go into more deeper learning. Um, and they learn about various biological phenomena with the aid of video technology. Um, and also, uh, which is very important, is that while the children are tackling technical tasks, all sorts of video processing, uh, they're always focusing on this natural phenomena that they are uh, covering in their project, which is really good, and it helps them focus on the uh, on the subject. Uh, so the main important thing, and, and other teachers have agreed with me, is, is that um, it's very important how focused they are in the task, and uh, they are also likely to start thinking more outside of the box and even come up with new ideas themselves related to this this subject and new questions. So absolutely, video biology can help children learn biology better by promoting more interest and get them to exactly go outside of the box. Um, important, importantly, uh, children can apply different technolo technology, different levels of technology. Some are very quick learners or have great competence in this, others not as much but uh, they can do just as nice projects even though their competence in technology isn't that great or if it is very good then they also have the ability to use different tools but always focused on the subject which in, in my case is biology. That's, that's very interesting Edda, thank you. Um, can you give some an example of some of the themes that you have used or we've used in the project that have been very effective, that you think have been effective, or any other themes maybe that you think could work yeah. within that biology framework? It is very important to find subjects that are not too difficult to find. And that's often challenging but fun for the teacher to think about what does my environment have to offer. Often it's just the garden outside, and often you can bring something back into the classroom. Uh, one interesting theme that we have been using is plants in different seasons. That's a project that you can uh, apply in just uh, one single class, and you go with the season that it's occurring, but you can also do it as a big project throughout the season, throughout the school year. And the idea there is that the kids go outside and take pictures and, and create some uh, um, picture story. Uh, about how plants have adapted to certain seasons. Of course, this goes for countries that have different climate during, throughout the year, of course. Um, but uh, what they do, for example, say if it's spring, they are focusing on the flowers. That's uh, the productive organ of the plant. And many children don't know about that, but they know about flowers, and they're beautiful. But they will have to know what is a flower. And uh, when it's... Uh, it's fall and it's becoming colder, uh, the trees will shed their leaves. And instead of leaves, there are little buttings on the trees. And they can take pictures of that and explain how the, the trees that have leaves, how they protect their bodies throughout the winter. But uh, the images that come out of this can be very beautiful and very nice photo stories. But they're always focusing on what is the plant doing and what's the season. Other ideas which are more suitable for movement or videos, uh, for example, animals on the move, how are animals adapted to, to movement, and how do they use their uh, shape to or the, their body to uh, do a particular movement, such as flying of the bird or, or running by the dog. Um, but there are more, more ideas. You can do very interesting stop uh, uh, time lapse, sorry, videos, for example, of plants growing or, or metabolism of yeast. These are very nice projects to do inside the classroom. 
Um, so there are endless of endless of ideas, but these are the main ideas that we have been working with so far, and they have proven very useful in in this sort of project. That's great. Thank you, Ada. It's very very. There's a lot more ideas that we've actually already discussed. That's so great to hear. Um, of course, the, the the big question always is, uh, particularly to people who may not have tried videos, has learning occurred? And is it improvement? Does it take a lot of time? Do we have better results? What, what do you think? What's your thoughts on that? Of course, we are quite early in this project, and we haven't had all the outcomes yet. But mm. uh, in terms of pedagogy, the, this project, the B2 Biology, is excellent for inquiry-based learning, for example, and fits well within the idea of STEM learning. Uh, so the video biology projects are actually designed as inquiry-based learning, where the children are involved with choosing the subject and come up with their own research questions. Just by doing that, they already start processing and thinking about the subject and what's important. Now, what comes next is that they do go out, and they're always doing this in collaboration with their teacher, they're doing this in, in groups. So they are um, they are encouraging and getting better in talking and communicating and sharing ideas. Um, then they go out into the nature, or they might set up a little experiment in the classroom, and they are involved in deciding what to do, coming up with ideas what to do and how to find answers to the research question. And uh, it's often fun and playful to go out, and they might not always realize that they're learning. But when they go out and take videos, for example, of the subject, they have to have in mind, what is it that I need to find out? What pictures do I need to take? Or in the experimental setup inside the classroom, how should the setup be? What are we trying to answer? Uh, how can I take the best pictures to explain what I'm learning? And uh, so they have to think about how to use pictures and video clips to explain their findings. So uh, this is just, yeah, uh, inquiry-based learning, indeed. And uh, when they finish the project, they can re reflect on what they learned. And they have to be able to introduce this to other students so they can uh, learn a little bit as well about what they the, the, that particular group learned. So that's how uh, I see that learning is occurring. And it provides opportunities for a broader range of students. They may, might have different strengths, and uh, this uh, induces, this can induce um, um, their competence in many ways, whether it's social skills or just simply learning uh, biology or learning more about technology. So the question, how has learning occurred through investigation, through John experimenting? Cameron. Yeah. Okay. So we were just being no, it's okay. We're just being uh, Edda, That was uh, Lyd Lydia, you know. Hi, Lydia. <laughs> Everybody else can see you. Everybody else. Can. You just take Sarah. Just take her. She's just taking Sarah, the dog, from underneath uh, the desk. Oh, okay. So she has to take her for a walk. Okay. Can you shut the door, please, Lyd? No. Okay. All right. So sorry about that. A uh, bit of a domestic interruption, but that's no life. problem. <laughs> okay. So, but the final question. I suppose, in a way, this is the hardest one. For, for us, for you as a biologist, but you know, we're looking at a STEM, a broad STEM-based audience here, and we've seen that there are some math teachers involved uh, who've mentioned themselves. I don't know about biology and the other STEM areas, but how do you think, and how do you think these methodologies could be applied in the other sciences? Uh, from your experience, from this, I mean, and your understanding of science, obviously, you're a biologist. It's yeah, a tough question, I know. It's a bit of a tough yeah. one, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> I will not come up with ideas for a math, math teachers or physics teachers. I could if I have time to sit down a little bit, though, but I think about it. But I will give you a general answer, but, but yeah. this is absolutely useful for, I think, all, all the subjects. Um, it just depends on whether the teacher is interested. Uh, no, so no matter what the subject is, the students are always involved in the planning. And uh, as Oliver said earlier, it's not some some uh, topics are not suitable for video no sorry for video uh, processing. Um, so the teacher always just have to come up with uh, certain topics that uh, he or she is going to cover and adjust that to video projects. 
Um, I think there are no limits to what classrooms you can use this in. Uh, even you could use this in engineering for, for university students um, or, or physiology, yeah, physiology, physics. I'm doing all these kinds of experiments and, and taking videos of and slowing down some movement process and the movement curve, for example. Um, so uh, endless opportunities. But what I would like to add here is that it is just important how the teacher plans this. Uh, it is important that the teacher never leaves the students kind of confused, uh, somewhere hanging. Uh, they, they sometimes become confused, especially lower levels, if um, they get too many options. Uh, it's always good to narrow it down a little bit. But of course, the higher in the education that the students are, the uh, more independent they are in finding projects. So the teacher needs to lead this but be very flexible about new ideas that come from the students and, co and encourage them to come up with, with some new ideas. Uh, especially when you're working with children, uh, they need to know each step in a project. Why are they doing this project and how can it be helpful? It's good for them to know it in the beginning. Uh, if the teacher has these things in mind, I, I'm confident that this method can be used in whatever subject that is, and particularly in, uh, particularly in the STEM for, for all sorts of uh, science and mathematics and technical education, because that's where many children are often insecure, not very confident. But bringing video and pictures and some sort of editing and post-production is something that can encourage a whole broad range of students to be more um, confident and interested uh, about science. Okay, that's a very nice answer. Thank you, Etta. Um, I'm going to jump over the last video because that is available online and just go over to um, where we can go next. Um, we have made all the resources, particularly for Video Math, which is now the completed project, uh, available online. And we're going to post these links up for you uh, into the chat when I've stopped talking. And do I ever stop talking? Um, but we have a website. We have a YouTube channel with about 100 different videos on. And we have Facebook pages as well. On the website, you will find uh, a content page. I think um, Armin already put that link up. If you might be able to put the link up again, please, Armin, to the video map content page. Uh, that will come up in a moment. And um, there you will find all the resources that will, will help you to use the project and links to the videos that will also support you. Uh, thank you, Armin. That's, video, oh, that's the video biology one. That's up. And we have the same one for video math. And I'll just jump over to video math, uh, video biology as well. Uh, on this one, we have the video biology website. We have a Facebook page where we can tell you what's going on. And then we've also got a Flickr page where all the students are actually putting up their work. Now, I'm going to try and share my uh, page for you um, through this. I don't know if it's going to work. If it doesn't, then we'll just come back and we'll go to the final part. So let's just try share my screen. Applications, yeah. So let's just see if I can get this up. Um, I don't know. Can anybody? Yeah. Can you see the um, the page? Uh, this is the where we're putting up all the photos and videos made by the different schools who've been using the project, so they can share their work with schools and uh, teachers across all of Europe. Each school has their own pay, own album where they then post all their videos and uh, photos into those albums so it can be shared with everybody across Europe. Now, let's try and go back. Okay. Did you actually see the, um, I don't know if you uh, saw, hopefully you can see the Flickr page that I put up. But that's just one way that we're sort of trying to involve everybody into the project. Uh, so 
that's our bit for now, and it's now your turn, please. Um, if you could please type in or any of the presenters who've actually seen a, uh, um, a question that they could answer, could you please post that into the chat and then answer that question? Uh, Armin, did you come yeah. up and see anything there for you? Um, there were two questions. Two questions I, I, I've written down. One question was from Ariana Stanka. How much time do the students need for creating the video? Um, that is, is very much dependent on what you do. If you just start with a very simple video clip, this can be done in one lesson. Let's say you just take any kind of camera, you just record one clip, no editing, nothing. This can be done in one lesson. But if you go, let's say, into a stop motion project, or you go more into video editing, or changing video speed, it could become a longer process of, let's say, five, six, seven lessons. It's also up to what I said beforehand, how you structure your project, because normally you don't have so much time in your lesson. You can do some part of the project in the lesson, and some part of the project can be a homework. So, for example, what we saw, those shapes and numbers in Potsdam, you can talk about the content of what you want to do, what you want to learn and achieve. Um, you can put the kids into teams, and I think somebody um, asked about the size, group size of team we normally have two or three children working together. The teamwork is very, very important because that's where reflection and development happens. It's not good if kids work alone. But back to the time issue, you can prepare ideas in the lesson and kids can go out after school and take some photos in their neighborhood about shapes and numbers. So that doesn't have to be in your precious lesson time. So there's a lot of different ways of going about. Okay. Any, any other questions? Maybe question of technology, I think, came up somewhere. Somebody asked about use of mobile technologies. That's, again, up to if you're allowed to use smartphones in your school or not. Some some are freer. Then, then it makes sense if kids can use their own technology. They know it, and they, they actually bring in the school content, the project lesson content onto their phone. It's a good argument. If that is an issue or you can't trust your students or the policy is different, you can use any kind of technology. That can be a webcam, what we use now. It can be what we use a lot are the old-fashioned kind of cigarette box size compact cameras. They often have a video function as well. It's not about an amazing quality of video. That's not the goal of the project. The kids can do that, and you have to have even better cameras. You can take it further. But the idea is about, the main idea is about using video. Okay, that's, that's great, Armin. Thank you. Is there, um, Ivana asks, can we still participate in the video math project? And the simple answer is, yes, please. We'd love <laughs> you to. And if you need any help to do so, uh, I've actually put my email address up on the, up on the chat just now. Uh, be, you're very welcome. Anybody is very welcome to write to us, and we'll try and help you uh, to use either project. Um, yeah. Any other um, questions, please? Yeah, maybe we should, you mentioned already, Joe, but just say again with video biology, which is our running one, we really would love some more feedback and testing. So if if you have any interest to ta participate, that link I send, the content by the video biology page, gives you quite a clear idea of what we're working on. Any kind of projects you do, and please come back to us, contact us. Uh, would be great to see more examples and get more feedback, what is working, what is not working, because we're still in the middle of producing the material. OK. Good. Um, EUN, do we need to finish? We're 51 minutes now. Or can we take more no. questions if there are? Have, uh, if there are any more questions, we can take some more. We have uh, nine more minutes until we close the session. So if anyone has any more questions. Uh, please address them now. Thank you. I see multiple yeah. attendees are typing. Some, some are okay. typing, but there's lots more to say, but I'm just thinking of what is really important for every project, that you show what you've done in the end. Um, 
ideally with a projector or a beam or a smart board on a bigger screen it's important that the kids see what they've done it's important that it's appreciated but it's also important to talk about it what you could do better so use that moment of reflection as well and what is also important because I have those discussions often with other teachers if you want to include grading assessment it's not just about the final outcome the video is very much about the process how have the students worked together how have they engage with the content of the lessons with the theme you're using um, and not only look at the end. Um, maybe Edda, Oliver, you, maybe you want to add a few more things from your perspective, would be nice. Um, yeah. Oliver, maybe about working with younger children would, some, would be something I would like to ask you. Would, can you also use, work with younger children on a project like this? Yes, I guess so. So we had, uh, as, so we have worked with uh, children in grade three. Um, so the only thing is that they are, have to be able to take pictures, and that is often uh, the very young are uh, still ab uh, already able to to use a, a smartphone to take pictures. So. Uh, I have, mm. in fact, a colleague uh, who is uh, making such things in kindergarten, that the children in kindergarten take pictures um, of their environment and then they talk about the pictures. Or, uh, so maybe a stop motion video would be too advanced for kindergarten children, but in, in grade three or four it is no problem at all. And there was a question about uh, group size. Uh, so we have worked with groups of uh, three or four children. That works very fine. And we grouped the children uh, not randomly, but uh, um, about their uh, performance in mathematics. That uh, So when all the students that uh, struggle with mathematics are together in one group, then they have to engage in the problem and have to engage in making the video. And they are uh, often uh, very uh, competent in making the videos, even if they have problems in mathematics. Um, but if you uh, mix up the groups and they ha you have the children that are very good in mathematics together with the weaker ones, then the good ones will do the work and the weaker ones are just watching. So we have very good experience with uh, having the children with that struggle together and to uh, challenge them to work on the problem. And, and the video helps them to Thank express you, themselves. And I must say that Oliver, he answered uh, quite well and, uh, and uh, came up with answers that I had, had had in mind, particularly about the group sizes. And the one, for example, just one experience that I remember is that we had a group of three, which is usually a really good group size. But in this group, we had two very outgoing and active girls and one very introvert boy. And the introvert boy didn't participate at all. He just had his hood on the whole time. So we saw there we had we have to arrange the groups a little bit better. And we, the teacher, of course, knows the children and needs to account for this as possible to have different uh, abilities, uh, line them up uh, according to their abilities, basically. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, are there any other questions for us? I would, I would like to... Um, okay, I've got a question for you. Um, okay. Uh, of the attendees here, um, would you like to actually try the project? Because we'd be very happy to actually help you uh, test particularly uh, now, the vi well, either project, but particularly the video biology, as Armin said. We'd, we'd love other uh, teachers to try it out in their schools to see if we're on the right track and to get your feedback as well because it is a, a, an ongoing project. Mm. Be great, yeah. yeah. The, while, you're, while you're typing, just to say we have 
lots of video tutorials and supporting video files as well. So you can, you can use those. There's YouTube playlists with lots of examples and helpful videos. With video maths, we have a very nice booklet which you can download in for free in PDF format. Um, with your biology, we're not that far yet. That is a very, I think, quite a u useful resource to get into the whole thing. Yeah, and we'll put those links on the on the on the chat again yeah. uh, in a second. I'm just uh, I don't know if you've got them ready, Armin, but I'll, if not, I'll just uh, give that link out. It's it's uh, it's included at a handbook. Is no, it's not. Sorry. Yeah. I've just got it up. You got it up, okay. So that's the video matter. Okay. Okay. Um, we've got two minutes left. Um, if there's no more uh, questions right at the moment, shall I just show this last video that I skipped over for now Good. from Video Biology? Hi, Joel. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Go on, Adri. I cannot hear myself or what's happening there now, so sorry if I'm interrupting someone. Uh, I also wanted to mention that. Uh, some of the resources that you created are also available in the in the Scientix repository, yeah. which I, is uh, very useful for the teachers who are present here, because uh, these resources are also available for uh, translation. Um, I cannot hear you at the moment, so um, if you want to finish the the um, session, I just want to say that uh, um, the um, the feedback form is available for all teachers who attended. Uh, my colleague Noel posted it in the chat. And uh, well, thank you very much for being here. If you want to add some uh, last notes, that's OK. And then um, good luck with, uh, with your further cooperation. Lovely. So um, I think we'll do the same. We'll say, uh, again, thank you very much to Adrian and Noel and the EUN team and the Scientix team who've been so very supportive of both of the projects and as Adrian says uh, we're putting up the resources as we develop them or for video biology and the video math ones are already on, uh, on the Scientex uh, portal already as she says they are available for translation if you would love to do that we'd love it as well we can add that into our European resources um, so as far as I'm concerned uh, thank you very much to my fellow presenters, Etta, Armin, and Oliver for supporting and helping this. And thank you to Adri, and thank you for all of you for attending. And guys, your turn. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, please come back to us, contact us, use our ideas. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for all the links. I just put that in. I will go through them, copy them out of the chat. Okay. So that's it. I'll just put my email address again. Goodbye. And goodbye from us. And goodbye, Etta, Armin, and Oliver. Bye. See you all soon, I hope. Bye, Oliver. All the best. Bye, Bye Oliver. Bye, Etta. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.